When you hear the phrase, children having children, what's the image that comes to mind? If you're like most people, the first thing you think of is a very young or teenage mother. But there are a lot of young and teenage fathers out there, too. And they, too, want to take care of their children and to be involved with them. And that's who we'll be talking to today on Fathers Are Parents, Too. <laughs> Welcome to Fathers or Parents 2. Today we're pleased to welcome back someone who's been on the show before, Steve Walker. And Steve is a director at the Teenage Pregnancy and Parenting Program. Did I get it right that That's time? That's right. <laughs> and Steve has also brought with him some of his uh, clients. And Steve, tell us who you are and why you're here. Well, and uh, once again, we're the Teenage Pregnancy and Parenting Project. And uh, we're from San Francisco. And today I have members of my fatherhood program, Taking Care of Business. I brought with me Paul and Alfredo. And we're here to share a little bit about our program and get a little feelings uh, and some exposure and let you guys know what we're about. All right. Well, for those who are watching the show who perhaps didn't have a chance to see the other show yet, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're about? Okay. Well, basically what TAP is is a comprehensive case management network that services teen moms and teen dads. And basically what we do is they come to us on an intake basis and we assess their needs and in that assessment we find out exactly what resources they need. They may need child, child, excuse me, child care, um, housing, getting back into school, uh, counseling around domestic violence and a variety of other issues and we hook them in to the resources they need. So that's basically what we do in a nutshell at the TAP project. But uh, Outside of that, we also service the teen fathers, and the program I developed, Taking Care of Business, we address the needs of the teen fathers. Now, this, I think, is a unique program, isn't it? I, it's the only one I've heard of that specifically goes out and targets young fathers and brings them in and gets them involved or helps them become involved. Is, is that the case? Do you know of other programs? Or? Well, we're the only program in San Francisco that services teen fathers, and we are a unique program. Um, our program uh, runs on um, 12-week cycles, and we run a support group for the young fathers. And we have a curriculum that entails uh, responsible fatherhood, effective parenting, ang anger management, sexuality, and a variety of things, a variety of sessions that basically we help uh, the teen father enhance his skills and become an effective parent. And stay involved with their kids, exactly. which is so important. Alfredo, now you're, you're a father. That's why you're here, right? And, and you yes. have how many children? One. And little boy, little girl? Little boy, three months old. Three months old. Congratulations. Thank you. So what do you think of this program? you think it's a good place to be? Or yeah. You can be honest, even though Steve's sitting right here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel it helped me out a lot. Um, builds communication skills, helps me deal with stress. Um, just have somebody to talk to when I need to. Do you get to see your baby much? Or? Yeah, I live with him. He lives with me. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. So you're really a really involved father, right? Uh, from the start, was that the case? Yeah. How did you come to be involved in the program? Um, well, somebody referred me to Steve, and um, I started a program bef uh, uh, before this one started. Mm -hmm. he had, there was another program. Same thing. Um, I started that one before my baby was born, and I just, you know, came back. Wow. He invited me back to this one. That's great. So you're actually getting these young parents in before their children are even born. That's correct. That's phenomenal. That is just so valuable that you're doing that. Is there a? Do you have sort of a, a prenatal and a postnatal program? Are there different programs for what stage? these parents are in or do you just sort of have a continuum? We have a continuum. Um, what was wonderful about uh, Alfredo joining, when he talk, spoke of programs, he meant cycles mm -hmm. and we, we do a 12-week cycle and so he was on our first cycle and so basically he was like pregnant on the first cycle <laughs> and so uh, um, uh, his baby was delivered like towards the, the last couple of weeks of our sessions 
and it was wonderful because we had like we bring our the babies to the group wow. and he was actually actually he brought the baby when i think the baby was like three or four days old four days to the group wow. and so he did a, actually did a lot of firsts in that group session so it was wonderful that's wonderful now what about your baby's mother does she, does she come to this program too or i mean is she part of this or uh, or how she does she care that i mean how does she feel about oh honey i'm going to take the baby out to my fathering program now that's not something you hear too often um well she enjoys me spending time with the baby and she's not well she's part of the program but a different mm -hmm. she's not part of what we do because she's not a father yeah <laughs> well, um I yeah, know she doesn't mind. She enjoys me taking the baby out. Wants me to take him out all the time. So that's great. That's great. Well, Paul, what's your story? What uh, you have one child? I have one child. She's two and a half. Oh my! Yes. That's a, the terrible two they call those. Oh yes, she's very <laughs> mischievous. Uh -huh. Her favorite word is happy meal. <laughs> <laughs> and who taught her that? <laughs> I haven't a clue, because I'm because I'm a, cause I'm a uh, Wendy's man myself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, that's a plug for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. My, I was um, part of the original, um, a part of the original coursework for the uh, TCB um, Prothering Program. Steve, um, I came, how I came in contact with um, actually TAP, which is, um, which is the foundation for for um, the TCB, is. Um, through a uh, um, teen father support, no, a teen parent support group at um, a high school that I was attending. And mm -hmm. that was before my daughter was born, so it must have been about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And guess. this was because you wanted to have a right. baby or because she was? She was she pregnant. Was <laughs> <laughs> she was <laughs> pregnant. I mean, it was, it was a very much so a surprise uh -huh. to both of us, obviously. Um, yeah, so, um, after after I left that high school and after you know I went on you know and did other things, Steve and I you know kept in close contact with Let each other. Let me just ask you: were were you actually teaching a class at the high school? Then? Yes. Is that mm -hmm. okay? Yes. Um, yeah. So Steve and I kept in close contact with each, with each other, you know. And what was really encouraging to me is the fact that that if I didn't call Steve for more. More than a week's time, he would always call me to see how I'm doing. Uh, you down, huh? Yeah, and and I have about four phone numbers, and he calls all four <laughs> <laughs> until he gets to me. But um, being involved in the being involved in TCB actually um, enhanced, you know, a, a few of the a few of the ground laws of um, of parenting. Um, it provided um, well for me because I'm one of the, I am one of the sen actually I'm yeah I'm one of the senior members of the group. I've been there from the first cycle, and I have the oldest child among the group. So it's a young group still then. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's how I got to be a member of TCB. Well, let's talk a little bit about the experience of being a young father. You mentioned that it was a surprise. Oh, yes. I mean, my family, I mean, talking about sex was taboo. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I mean, I was just totally uneducated about, about, um, about sexuality, you know. Um, you know, because I was 15 when my child was conceived. And at 15, I thought I was just still shooting blanks or something. I didn't know, <laughs> <laughs> just didn't know. that I could conceive a child. So what, what both of you, I want to know, and actually we'll ask Alfredo first, what, when you found out that you were expecting, do you remember what you went through in terms of when you first found out? What, what was your immediate reaction? Uh, well, I felt, I don't know, it just, I was younger because she had a couple of miscarriages through the stress and um, I was younger and I wasn't, you know, into relationship or nothing at the beginning. And um, after a while I just started being there for her more and it just, I don't know, it just worked on me. Um, was there a point you remember when it actually hit you that you're going to have a baby? It, it, you actually realized, wow, I'm going to be a parent? Was yeah, it that's uh, when I started going to the clinic and stuff. Mm -hmm. Seeing little pictures of him in the stomach uh -huh. started making me, you know, feel like a daddy proud and stuff. So 
that's successful. Sweet. That's neat. And what about you, Paul? Do you remember when you first found out that you were expecting a baby? Oh, yes. Yeah, the first thing I, the first question, I mean, my first, very first reaction, who's the father? <laughs> oh, dear. I mean, because, like I said, I, I was 15 and uneducated. I didn't know that I could even conceive a child. Um, then, you know, then the next thing was, so what are we going to do? Because, um, you know, I was taught, you know, to be a responsible individual, and I do have my own set of values. So the next step, you know, after, you know, the actual, you know, realization that there is a child coming is to say, what are we going to do? Not just push it off on her or, or make it a one-way one thing. And then we, well, she wants, well, she wanted to get rid of it, but, but I didn't, um, I mean, I wasn't ready for a child, but I didn't want to get rid of it. Actually, I don't care how many books that you read, I don't care how prepared that you, I mean, how prepared you think you are, no one is actually ready to be a parent for the first time. But, um, um, well, with that in mind, I just said, okay, well, let's do it. Let's keep it and, you know, see what we can do. Now the relationship that that we had, well, actually we didn't have a relationship. To be totally honest with you, all we had was we a physical. Had at least a little one. <laughs> well, no, it was a physical relationship. I met her on Thursday. She spent the night Saturday. <laughs> so you're a fast operator. <laughs> yeah, but um, but you know after but after but after it was discovered that she was pregnant, um, um, we did try to you know make a relationship, you know, but it didn't work because because. You, she had her ways and I had mine, you know. So how's your relationship in terms of co-parenting now? Do you, are you able to communicate, both of you, with, with uh, the mothers of your children enough to say, hey, you know, she's got the sniffles today, or hey, I've got something to do, can you be with her? Or do you guys, are you able to talk to your, your mothers that way, the mothers of your children? Um, uh, yeah, um. I am, um, me and my daughter's mother, we, we have, we have our days, our, you know, so, some periods of time, you know, we can't stand each other, but other periods, um, we're at least on speaking terms, but, um, but we do, well, I can't speak for her, but I know I do, you know, do things wisely, I do make wise decisions, and I do try to keep um, the rapport between me and her, um, okay, you know, so that so that we can, you know, keep a good wall of communication going because because my daughter, she's going to need that and she's going to need an example, you know, in case she's in, in the same position. Well, I hope she's much older, but, <laughs> but so that but so that she can have the groundwork and foundation so to, um, to, you know, carry on with the relationship. And that child doesn't have to be involved for that matter, just as long as she has you know, what she needs in terms of a role model and example, you know, to, to do what she has to do. Now we're going to take a break in a second, but I just have to say, you're sitting here listening to these two, I don't know if students the right word, but these are certainly, you know, upstanding examples of the work you're doing, and you must just be so proud to hear, I mean, is this your work? Is this your doing? Or? That's my work, but it's a privilege just to be, you know, give these guys the skills to do that and just to be around a wonderful experience. I mean, I really like working with them and it's a privilege working with them. I, you know, I have to say you mentioned that you're never ready to be a parent and that made me want to point out that it's an important thing for young fathers to know because it's true for fathers of all ages and in that way you're no more behind the ball than you know, fathers who are 30 or 40 and I have to tell you that I work with a lot of fathers who are much older than you and they're not even getting it that you have to set this example for your kids so uh, you're definitely to be applauded. We'll be right back. I'd like to talk to you about divorce. Not what it means to you as a parent, but what it means to your children, coming from someone whose parents are divorced. Some divorced parents feel they need to involve their children in disagreements by putting the other parent down. If you're a parent, step-parent, girlfriend, or boyfriend of someone who is involved in a divorce, please don't involve the children in the issue. It's a terrible feeling for someone to hear negative things about the other parent, no matter how old they are or how true or insignificant you feel the comment is. 
you also have to know that the effects of trying to cut the other parent out of your chil children's life are even more devastating. FREE, the Father's Rights and Equality Exchange, is an organization that firmly believes in having both parents in your child's life. For more information, call 1-500-4-DADS. I'm lucky in the fact that my mother has never interfered with my father's relationship. In fact, she's always encouraged me to stay involved with him. But coming from someone who's been through a divorce with my parents, I realized that by giving comments to your children that are negative about the other parent, it will only cause them to resent you. My parents may not always agree with each other, but I know I'm glad to have both of them in my life, and your kids will be too. Right, Mom? Right. Welcome back to Fathers or Parents 2. We're here today with members of the TCBY Taking Care of Business Teen Fathering Program. And we have a question from the audience. Yeah, my, my question is uh, for Paul or Alfredo. Uh, how do you feel about fatherhood now that you're in it? And how do you fe feel that taking care of business has affected your lives versus perhaps not ever having participated in that program? Well, I um, I um, I like being a dad. You know, I mean, it's it's very rewarding, especially when you see when you see your your, your this person that you can see. You know, going going through various stages as far, as far as, you know, learning different things and growing up and whatnot. TCB has helped me deal, deal with the adult issues of um, the whole thing as far as anger management, um, learning, you know, le learning um, to deal with patients, learning, how, learning people skills, um, and also just learning um, what a child expects or should expect um, of their parent, you know, even at the toddler stages. Well, Go ahead. Um, feels great being a father, just to look down and see somebody you know I made or half halfway made. Um, and TCB has helped a lot. If I would never went to this program, I would have been, I don't know, <laughs> just not knowing how to deal with a lot of things that they have taught me to deal with. Um, for example, stress. Uh, basically the same thing what Paul said. Yeah. I just want to point out that it's a good thing that the two of you know the name of the program, which of course is Taking Care of Business, TCB. Not TCBY, as I <laughs> hope. Yeah, show it, which we all know is the country's best yogurt. So we'll plug for them too, and I apologize uh, to you for that. Did you have another question? Yeah, uh, what is a, a standard meeting that you folks have? Uh, what, what's it like? How many dads do you have? How many, how many kids come in? Do you have lectures? Just you know, or do you just rap or what, what do, you do? do you do? Do you see rap anymore? <laughs> <laughs> we uh, basically what we do is um, when we first came in, we have like a reflection on you know what what's been went on in your life since the last time we saw you, like since last Wednesday. What happened? And um, we go around the room, and we, everybody has the opportunity to pass if they, nothing really happened or something may have happened in their lives that they want to share with us. So we do that, and then we get into whatever the topic may be that, for that particular session, and we get into processing the issue, and then after that we have a light meal, and then we do another reflection on you know, what we talked about and wh why did we talk about this subject. And it usually goes from 45 minutes to, uh, to two hours. or it, it, it varies. Sometimes we are two hours, sometimes we are an hour and a half. Now, I bet when you're doing those reflections, this guy here never passes, does he? No. And we have to move on sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have another question from the audience. Yeah, I, it's, uh, it seems to me like both you guys are, are pretty pretty happy about being dads. I mean, you've, you've discovered how, how rewarding it is, and, and you realize it's, yeah, there's a lot of responsibility, but it's, it's fun, too. I wonder if you'd care to, to talk a little bit about your your families and how your families have, have helped to support you in in uh, your fatherhood. Well, a lot of people are victims of foolish thinking. They, uh, um, when I say they, that means the adult community or, or those that just have that babies raising babies attitude. You know, the people in in that um, frame of mind. Um, they. Are the are ones that that are not supportive, and a lot of and a lot of times they're they're found in our in our families and whatnot. But my family, um, 
you know, I've had I've had some of those, you know, okay, where you're just a baby, you know, what are you gonna do and and how are you gonna do it and, and you know, that whole spiel. But other others in my family, you know, they, they really they really accepted it. They were very supportive and um and they offered just their all to um to keep me going mentally and to help me in all areas that I need needed help in. Okay. Um, well, my family's been there for me since day one. Uh, my mom was there to take us to the hospital when we needed rides and stuff financially. Um, she was just always there for us, you know. Um, my sisters, her side of the family was there for us too. That's great. I'm sure in large part that's also because you guys have a really good attitude and so it makes it easy or easier, I think, to probably support you. Don't you find that's true with, with yeah, these Yeah, one of the things we do with the program is we teach them how to build their support networks and, and learn how to, you know, uh, talk to their different family members and get feedback and how they parented and what skills they want to use from their different parenting experiences. So we teach them how to do that and we teach them how to build that strong support network. Now, I, you mentioned that, uh, Paul, you mentioned that with, um, you know, some of your family members even said, you know, your baby's having babies. And I even opened the show with that phrase just because it's such a trite phrase that everyone just sort of latches on to. But I just want to point out that you are both very responsible young men. And I know that you, Paul, have actually already gotten your high school equivalency and you've got a job. And Alfredo, you're, you're in school and have a part-time job also. So you are uh, evidence that you know that that as young fathers you can no matter how young you are you can be responsible and involved in caring parents and you're to be applauded I think both of you for that and Steve right. you're to be applauded for you know helping to facilitate that I want to follow up um, the last question about your families with your peers you know when when you go to school or when you were in school at the time that your daughter was conceived you know how are you different from other of your peer groups that are that you know young fathers do you see a difference because of the program or just generally your attitude? Well, I've I've always been the type of per person that, you know, I mean, I don't do irresponsible things. Um, I've always I've always kept a level head about everything that I did and I think about what I do. Um, I did before before I became sexually active, I did you know, actually think about it. Most people don't think about it, they just go at the heat of the moment. But I but I said to myself that that whatever I did, whether whatever I did, I would be responsible for the consequences if any something went wrong, pregnancy or or, or if a baby arised. Um, um, you know, disease. I mean anything, you mm -hmm. know, I would be responsible for it. And and uh, no one should have to answer for anything that I do. And I've never been a lazy person, you know. Um, I've always been willing to to do what I need to do to to be self sufficient. Because I because I've I've been partially independent for uh, since since I can remember. You know? So what about your 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 friends from school who are you know were the same age you were? What what did they say when you said, "Oh, we're going to have this baby, and I'm going to be a father and be responsible for it"? And you know, what, what was their response? Well, they, um, a lot of them, you know, they, they made their jokes and they made, oh man, now you're gonna be at home. And, and one, one of my friends said, man, do fathers have to breastfeed too? <laughs> <laughs> we laugh, but that's, you know, a large part of why you have the sorts of education that you do, because people really don't know. And, yeah. and they're not, like you said, you never got that education at home. and. And uh, so, I mean, we laugh, but that he may have met it. Yeah. <laughs> Alfredo, what, I'm sorry, what, I just wanted to get Alfredo's because <clears throat> we have well, a question. Well, um, many of my friends were just made fun of me, saying basically the same thing. I was going to be at home all the time. I wasn't going to be outside hanging with them anymore. And, and I feel I have a positive attitude, and the program only made it better, you know. They were there for me, and, you know. So. That's right. Did, now, did the program, working in the program, which gave you the communication skills that you talked about um, or helped enhance them, did that also help you to sort of deal with what your friends were saying and say to them, hey, look, I'm, this is my choice and it's the right thing to do? And um, Do they understand that now? 
Well, when that was going on, um, the program, I wasn't in the program yet. And then until after, after a certain amount of time, that's when I joined the program. And I already had left my friends, you know. I couldn't hang around with them anymore because they were, you know, negative, showing me negative things and stuff. So and then I joined the program and... Sounds I mean, like you feel like you made the right choice, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have another question from the audience. This is actually not so much of a question. I'd just like to take a moment and commend Steve and the other people involved with his organization. Uh, having I been a teenage father myself once upon a time, we certainly could have used an orga organization like this, as well as a lot of other friends of mine could as well. Thank you. What, can I just ask you, as we usually have the audience asking us the questions, but what was, do, do you see any difference now in, in what you're hearing from these young men as to maybe when you were a teenager going through this and your friends, is there a sort of a, a quantitative difference that you can, or qualitative? Yeah, there is a vast difference. I, I think during my era, when I was a teenager, and there were a lot of other teenage fathers out there, uh, we didn't seem as, as responsible as these gentlemen seem here right now. We took more of kind of a joke and a badge of honor uh, to have impregnated some little girl someplace. And, and uh, I think these gentlemen take it a lot more seriously than we did. Well, I, I appreciate your comment, and I'm, I'm sure they do also. Thank you very much. All right, we have just a couple of minutes left, and I'm going to ask each of you the same question. You can all answer the same question, but, but try to keep your answers kind of short. Um, if you had one piece of advice, you know, if you had a young father-to-be come up to you, or Paul to you, or to you, Alfredo, what would be the one most important piece of advice you would give them? If I had a father come to me and, and just... A young expectant father. Um, it's your child, and I would, I, I, several things, but one thing that just hits me in my mind is like, would you want some other person to be, some other male to be raising your child, and then that child not know you as being the father? How would that make you feel? So basically, what I'm trying to say there is that, I don't, you know, you should be a part of that, your, your, your child's life. And think about that. Think about that. Paul? I would say, uh, my first thing We'll probably cut it off before you get started with it. Cut it off. Just <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> my, I, I probably would say no. What I would say is, um, is you know, now that you, you know, made the decision to have sex and you've, you know, made and you know, a pregnancy did occur. You have arrived as a father. And it starts now, and you need to do all that you can do to make sure that your child grows up in the way that you would want to be, and to be a and to be a good and constant reflection on you as a person. Very good advice. And Alfredo, I'm sorry to say you only have about ten seconds. Um, well, being a father is just beautiful, and uh, just the most important thing is to be there, be a positive role model to your children, and just stick there with them. That's wonderful, and that's because fathers are parents, too. Thank you so much for being here and for having this program. And audience, thank you for being here. And we'll see you next time on Fathers or Parents, too.